I'm here with another Unify update video. We're going to be looking at two different updates today. So Unify have updated their network application, which is 7.0.20, and the Unify protect has gone from 1.20 to 1.21. There's a long list of updates on the network side. So if we have a quick scroll down here, there's I think there's quite a few UI changes. Um, so we'll have a little look at that. And there's a a fair amount of bug fixes as well um, and there's some known issues down at the bottom that's for the Unify network application and Unify protect there seems to be some notification improvements again a few UI improvements um, and that's about it really so what we're going to do we're going to compare them against a previous generation so I have 1.2.0 um, for protect and we'll compare it against 1.21 and I have 6.5.54, I believe, um, on one machine. So, and the older version was 6.5.55, but I'm going to let that one slide in terms of what it is. Um, and we're going to compare it against the 7.0.20. So we'll start with the Unify network first on, um, I believe, probably the right-hand side of your screen. So this side, just here, this is the 6.5.54. And on this side, we have the 7. 0.20. So straight looking at the front dashboard, it looks fairly similar. Um, where the difference comes on this first page is when you scroll down, you can see the traffic overview and the client device type and the active clients. On the newer side, on the newer version for 7.0.20, you can see that if I scroll down a little bit, a couple of new widgets on the dashboard. So we have Wi-Fi clients, which shows you a breakdown of what everything is connected by and your most active clients. Next, we move across to the topology and there doesn't really seem to be anything different on here other than I did notice that the floor plan that you had up here previously, which said coming soon, has now disappeared from the top up here on the newer version. So not quite sure if something different is coming in a future update, but that's what that looks like. We then look at the devices, the unified devices. So switching over to the devices, I don't think anything's actually updated here um, other than, yeah, I don't think there's really too much that's that's updated on this side. So this is all the same. So we can move across to then uh, client devices. And again, similar sort of thing on here. I don't think there's anything that's really changed on either of these, these um, this side of things. If I quickly scroll across, there's nothing here, and same with this one, it's all the same. So looking at the traffic stats, there doesn't seem to be too much of a change here. Everything again seems to be fairly similar. I think the changes mainly have come in the in the settings section, so we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. We have Wi-Fi Insights, again looks the same, and same with the traffic inspector. That is what we've come to see anyway. So that looks fairly similar. Notifications, doesn't look anything different. And finally, we jump to the settings. Now, this is where it begins to look a little bit different. Whereas previously, you can see on the older version, it's displaying all of the different tabs. We now have this three buttons across here to do that. So that's if the system is a little bit smaller or the page is a little bit smaller. If it's a bit bigger, then it will display it how it is at this moment on the left hand side. In terms of network itself, you can see there's a new pause button on this left hand side, so you can actually stop the networks from being broadcasted or being used. If I jump into the test network, so this is a Wi-Fi that's being broadcasted on both, you can see it's a little bit different in terms of um, how it looks and feels. So we have the APs that we're being tested on, what the network is, and the advanced configuration, you can either have it auto and manual and change the bits down here and on the older version you have the advanced configuration so it's still there but you can actually have it automatic or manual you can choose however you want so underneath on the older version you have a guest hotspot which is just here and on the newer version you can have global ap settings now so this is something a little bit different um, i believe it did something like this anyway but they've now made it a bit more um, obvious in terms of how it does it so you can have an optimization run every day and that basically scans your channels and making sure you're on the most optimal Wi-Fi channel um, to make sure there's the least interference. There's also looking down here, there's uh, exclusions. So you can actually exclude Wi-Fi access points if you think that, no, this one definitely needs to stay on this channel. You can, start, um, for a specific AP, then you can do that. Moving on, if I just quickly run down this list, so we have the networks now. So same again, On you have the pause button on these networks. And same, adding a new network looks a little bit different now than it did previously. 
So you have the advanced configuration and you can basically, you can leave it to automatic or use manual, it's entirely up to you. In terms of internet, there's nothing really changed here. This looks exactly the same as it was previously. Now this is where the shift begins to happen. So we have VPN here, which doesn't actually exist on the left hand side. So we can click on VPN and what this allows you to do is it allows you to enable your VPN by just clicking one button. It set everything up for you so you don't need to worry about setting anything up basically, it's ready to go. Just one click of a button and you'll have VPN back to your uh, network. Then we have on the newer version we have traffic management which um, is traffic and security on the older version. So if I click on this, they have this nice new um, setting at the top which is showing that it's scanning the um, traffic before it goes out so you can allow. Now what would be good, I mean this does look really nice, don't get me wrong, I would have rather Unify work on getting the speed limit sorted and the scheduling rather than making it just look nice. Um, I know it's probably a lot more of a bigger job to get the other bits working but the UI is nice to have but the functionality would be better. Down on the older version you have global threat management and traffic and device identification. So you have tra traffic and device identification on the newer version which is just down here, in the bottom just down here and you have static routes which you now create from here as well. In terms of global threat management that's disappeared from here. So we go here and you now have firewall and security. A few more settings in here, uh, country restrictions, threat management, they've changed this. So previously this used to be IPS and IDS uh, and now it's an off, so now it's off, detect only, which is IPS. And um, they have detect and block, which is IDS. The system sensitivity is where you specify the different threats, so you can set them to low, medium, or high. High obviously being everything enabled. Um, which means you would result in uh, more CPU usage and more alerts. Then we have the firewall rules and scrolling down we have some port forwarding and uh, signature suppression here as well. So on the older version you had notifications which on this one has seemed to have disappeared. We then moved to profiles on here. We have advanced features which now I think looks fairly similar to before. So we have the guest hotspot if you want to set up any authentication types. Switch ports which is here on both sides. Network isolation, which has actually disappeared from this side of it. And you have bandwidth profiles, radius, and port groups, and port and IP groups. Then we move across to system. So we have system on both of these. Now this definitely looks a little bit different. You have your notifications now up here. So they've been moved away from the main category. They're now in your system settings. Uh, which territory you're in, your language, time format. Um, so previously in the older one, in the older version, you would have had new user interface. Uh, I, surprisingly enough, I still use this quite a bit. I know this interface is probably still an alpha, beta, whatever it is, but the amount of times I've had to go back to the older interface to do something is somewhat beginning to get a bit more frustrating now. If they're gonna switch it off, then just move everything across already. <laughs> um, it would be helpful, but if you wanna go back to the older interface, you can click enable just here and that will take you back to the older version. Uh, down at the bottom you have dark and light, enable if you want Wi-Fi man and in terms of updates you can choose down here. So auto device update, what channel for, what device firmware release channel you want to be on. There we go, that's a quick overview of the Unify network, the differences between the two in terms of looking. I'm sure there are some more smaller, smaller features that I've not gone into or smaller settings that have been added that I've not gone into. But this just gives you a brief overview and look at what the differences are. And as I mentioned, you can see the two network settings at the bottom of both systems. Let's move on to then Unify Protect. So these are running 1.20.0 and 1.21.0. Straight looking at this straight away, there isn't really too many differences on the front screen. It just shows you what storage you've got, what recordings you've got. And if I scroll towards the bottom, you'll see that it shows you the detections as well. So running through this, we have the dev devices that are connected as well. Um, most of my devices are currently disconnected. I'm not quite sure why. Devices are disconnected. The display options are the same. Just shows you everything that's there, um, what you have, the different models. We then have the live view, which shows you what's on, uh, what you've got displaying at the moment. We then have the playback option again doesn't look too different. Maybe a few changes down below here in terms of how it's displayed, um, but there isn't really too much difference in that sense. We then have the detections, which again, doesn't really look any different. Looks exactly the same. 
So the only thing that's changed a little bit that you can probably see on the new side is we have this little analytics button. Now what this analytics shows is where your persons and vehicles are detected. So where most of the heat mapping is and where they are, it shows that, which is quite interesting. And then down below it shows you how many times they've been um, spotted. So you can do that over a one day period, seven day period, one month period. I've only just turned this on so and updated so there's probably not going to be a lot of data just there and I've just migrated to the UDM Pro SE as well which also means some of my previous history, historical data has also been wiped. So this is the only thing that seems to be new and you can choose any, any of the devices that are on here. Well, you can choose anything from a G4 range or higher. Any G3s are showing up here. Then we move on to rolls which is the same, nothing's really changed here, you can add the roles, we have the notifications which again not really too much different here, looks exactly the same on both sides and then we move to the settings. So settings again this is another another part of the inconsistency of the Unify uh, system in terms of just the general look and feel so you can see normally there's the uh, three, three lines up here on the uh, newer version on the network, but they haven't implemented it on the Protect version. In terms of everything else, it looks exactly the same. The only thing different on here is you've got Re Factory Reset Unified Protect, which seems to have disappeared from here, so that, that's no longer there. Um, notifications, exactly the same. They look exactly the same, default or custom. Uh, there's a little bit of maybe uh, formatting when uh, or the display when the page is not the, the size that it thinks it is and the recording. The recording is exactly the same. So realistically there is a long list of uh, UI upgrades in terms of Unify Protect but there doesn't really seem to be too much more different here. I mean it looks fairly similar other than the analytics. Again I'm not going to go down into each individual setting to try and find out what's different and what's new but it gives you a rough idea of what, what the new settings are within and what looks different. I hope this video has been useful. Unified do have a, a newer version now, version 7, so I'm actually thinking about doing a, a series on setting it all up, so I've got some videos on my channel which are probably a little bit older now of some of the older versions, so I think I might be doing some refreshing of some of those topics. If there's anything specific that you want to see, let me know down in the description below, and I'll see what I can do. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.